you mentioned this book during our first conversation uh, about what an imagined future society would look like. Your materials design engine is is looking to eventually create these these materials, and I'll I'll let you say the futuristic materials that you want decades from now. But what was that book? So the book was called um, Planet Yarga. So mm -hmm. the beautiful thing about Planet Yarga is. Of course, we can't verify the, the veracity of the claim, right, of this author, but the author uh, uh, named Stefan Derd. Uh, Stefan Derd was a multimillionaire engineer. So, you know, goals for us. Like he was a very successful entrepreneurial engineer. And uh, he went on record after writing this book and he said, and his whole family backed him up, you know, they were there. He claimed that he had actually, uh, run into these these aliens for no no other no lack of a better term he said that these beings whatever you would like to call them told him over the span of two days they brought him into his ship uh or or however you'd like to describe it that's how they described it right and uh they explained to him their philosophy how their culture works how their science works how their society is built uh and so there's incredible detail and here's the cool thing so this book was written in the 60s. It was released late 60s, uh, and then later versions rehashed in the 70s and 80s. And if you look at what's described, the technologies that are described in this advanced society, he's literally describing iPads without using the word. He, you know, for example, there's things like you know glass where the text would change and you could touch it. You know, mm -hmm. this is like Steve Jobs level stuff, like things that he was like thinking of. Maybe Steve Jobs read it. He might. He might have. <laughs> I, I, iPads were definitely in a in a few science fiction novels, but I love that yeah. for sure. <laughs> Absolutely, there was also uh, the fact that they had done the cost benefit analysis, and they realized that planes aren't the most efficient way of transporting mass people. So what they have is a inter uh, planet, like a, around the entire planet, train system that connects everything. And you know what it's using? Superconductors, room temperature superconductors. Of so 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 <laughs> that was, they hadn't figured out uh the air air resistance suspension by then yet <laughs> i mean <laughs> just right. kidding the mach 31 <laughs> no but that's off awesome. they were using superconductors yeah they truly were and you know they talk about physics that they claim we don't know yet which, which allows for their faster than light capabilities mm -hmm. uh and so that's part of like why I, I i do think even just looking at the observables what these pilots have been talking about our physics aren't perfect. Like it's definitely not able to accurately describe how these things move. Um, so we're very much in the 1911 scenario where we're seeing superconductors for the first time. And we our physics tells us that shouldn't be possible. And so it's just mm -hmm. a matter of time before we find new physics that actually says, nope, this is how it works. Uh, and so so this this book um, goes into detail about their engineering, how their, their houses are built to be optimally spaced and, and all these things. Um, and so what I see as sort of the future is this, they're, by the way, higher hardcore sustainability type folks. They are extremely like pro sustainability. All their engineering is based on that. So, you know, the future of the materials that we create through the simulator, eventually I want them to be as sustainable as possible, right? From the get go. And um, something that, you know, the book doesn't talk about per se, but uh, this is just my own sort of dream. And, you know, I, I remember this was one of the first things we talked about was this idea of merging biology and technology to the point where technology is indistinguishable from biology and from yeah. nature, right? So imagine trees that legitimately distribute Wi-Fi and, and handle cellular connections and all that stuff. Imagine houses that you can grow and they're very technological. They have circuits all around, but they're super sustainable and they're biological. That's sort of the end goal of this engine is to be able to create those kinds of highly advanced materials and also the materials that allow us to, let's say, decouple from the Higgs field, the thing that gives things matter, right? And allows for these almost anti-gravitational, like- That's what I was waiting for, the anti-gravity play. <laughs> <laughs> anti-gravity and the reproducing yeah. circuits is pretty amazing too. I love that, that um, it's like a growing world. Yeah, it's a growing world of technology. I mean, that's beautiful. That's an amazing image.